Hey there. All right. So today I'm going to show you how to use the art history brush in Photoshop. Um, and I've just got this photo open. It's a stock photo that I have. It's a, it's a lot of detail in there. So you can really zoom in and do it. It's really, I'm just going to crop it in a little bit maybe. Okay. So just because it's big, I'm going to reduce the size. Let's say 900 tall. Yeah. So I'm going to duplicate the background just so I can keep it, just in case I uh, don't like what I've done. And I select the art history brush here, and I just hold down to bring out this little drop menu. So that's the tool. And what you're going to want to do to set it up is to go to history. Um, and you have this little thing, it's like a, it looks like a camera icon, and it takes a snapshot of uh, yeah, basically the, uh, yeah, the stage of where the whole painting is. So if you have a bunch of layers built up and you, you hit that, it's going to uh, take an actual snapshot of all it. And this is what the Art History Brush actually needs to call to as it's working. Um, so you actually have to switch from that to this and click that little button. Then you can just close it. Uh, and then, because you have your art, art history out, just uh, open up, find a brush. Maybe I'll, I'll do one that has Photoshop starts with, which is this round brush. Uh, and then you have uh, a few options up here. You got your op opacity, you got uh, different uh, color modes. And then uh, the different styles of, it, of the, the way it works. I just like dab because it's uh, really simple and uh, all these, these other ones you can play with. Um, so basically all you do is just start holding it down, make it bigger sizes. You can see how broad it gets really quick, how big. So the finer you get down there, you can just keep redoing it. It just keeps going back to that, that snapshot we took. So if I go really small, it'll just do really small, tiny dots. But if you actually choose um, a brush that is intended for something like this, or even just to get really good textures and stuff from, um, then you're gonna end up with something something really different. You know, one in mind. Yeah, let's try this one. This one, if you actually uh, let's see if I can make it work good. Texture got a texture on it that's kind of uh, yeah these different textures you can use for your brushes but this one is actually like a canvas material so I'm just going to scale it up so when you actually go over it you can see that uh, yeah it kind of has this canvas residue all around it um, I'm actually going to turn the brush around so I like it pointing that way so maybe I'll zoom out Usually I'll use a brush like this for if I've, I've done a painting, um, and I just I really want to add texture to it, mess it up a little. Uh, and you, but you can use it on photos if you're uh, if you're not a painter. You just keep trying different ones and having fun with it. I I think it's just a really fun brush to play with. But so you can start to just build up. Yeah, some cool textures. Use really elaborate brushes. That was not working too well. Let me try something like this. Nope. Oh, I've got it on paint. That's why. So let's say I did something like that. Um, sometimes you can just use it as a good starting point. So I'll copy the original just to show you. I'll paste it on top. Oops. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, sorry. I'll just uh, yeah. So you have this sort of the base colors already there, which you would paint it on anyway. You can just select the colors that are around there. Use this as a reference. Even 
choose colors from there if you want to. But you can see that soon enough you start to have something that looks just like a painting. And you really did, uh, I mean it does take work maybe developing brushes and stuff like that, but it's a fun tool to use and I definitely encourage people to play with it and, and see where they can work it into their, their own processes. But until yeah, next time, take care.